for as long as I've got a pulse, I'll be gardening and growing food. And pulses are definitely one crop I'll be growing. So what is a pulse? It's the edible dried seed of legumes like peas and beans, and they're a great source of plant protein. These are chickpeas and bolotti beans. And what do you think I'm gonna do today? Well, I'm gonna show you how to grow pulses. Choose an open, sunny position with protection from strong winds. Now, with the exception of the broad bean, which are frost hardy, you shouldn't plant legume crops until the danger of frost has passed. Plenty of organic matter like compost or mild aged manures like sheep or cow are good for soil biology. They will improve the structure, helping to retain moisture and nutrients. If your soil is a bit acidic, or if you think it's lacking in calcium, add some lime and do this a couple of weeks before you plant. But this soil here, it doesn't need it at all. Plants need nitrogen for growth, but there's no need to use high nitrogen fertilisers here because legumes have their own nitrogen source. They co-evolved with bacteria that take nitrogen from the atmosphere and make it into compounds that are available to plants. Soaking your seed overnight will make germination quicker and more uniform. Now the first pulse slash legume that I'm gonna to plant today is a kidney bean variety called Big Bend. Now it's a bush variety, so it doesn't require any kind of support. And I'm gonna put them in at 30 centimetre spacings. There's no shortage of kidney bean recipes. They're used to make Punjabi curry, Cajun and Middle Eastern stews, chili con carne, and a lot more. I'm planting into reels so I can capture as much water as possible. This interesting two-tone variety of bean is called Dragon's Tongue, and it's a Dutch heirloom. I'm gonna plant it at the same spacing as the red kidney, about 30 centimetres apart. Dragon's Tongue is good as a fresh green bean or as a dried pulse. Now to the soybean. These guys are really high in protein. I like to plant them about 30 to 40 centimetres apart. If you're in a windy area, they may need a stake as a bit of support, but these bushy beans are usually pretty good. Now, if you lightly steam or boil the green pods, it's called edamame, and they're great as a beer snack, as well as other things. And the dried soy pulse can be used to make soy milk, tofu, soy sauce, well, lots of stuff, really. Now, the theme for today is pulses, but in a postmodern world, who sticks to themes? Quinoa is not a pulse. It's a seed more closely related to spinach than to beans and peas, and it's suited to Tassie's cool, temperate climate. And it's used in the kitchen kind of like rice, and it's really nutritious. It loves the soil that's light and fluffy and filled with organic material. The soil here at the patch is pretty good. It just needs a bit of cultivation to break up these larger clods. The variety I'm growing is a multicoloured one, and I'm really excited to see, because I've never grown this before. Now, because they're such a small seed, I just like to loosely broadcast them around the bed. And then as they come up, I can thin them out to half metre spacings. And because they are such a small seed, I don't even need to cover them. I can just water them in and they'll find the right level. The quinoa will be ready to harvest in about three months when the seed are plump and the stems have started to die back. The pulses also take about three months. Harvest the pods when they're dry. Pulses.
pulses. They're filling, they're jam-packed, full of protein. You can build a whole meal around them and they're a doddle to grow. It's enough to really get a gardener's blood pumping.